Greetings. A couple of weeks ago, I put out a video on Israel United in Christ's recent march in Memphis, which largely compared it to the somewhat similar events from the history of the Israeli Church of Universal Practical Knowledge and the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ. Uh, personally, I didn't feel the video was particularly critical of IUIC, but it seems from the comments on the video that a few of the group's members and supporters did interpret it as an attack. With that in mind, I want to note that there are many videos critical of various Israelite groups. I myself have participated in a few such videos. However, it should be noted that not every video made by a person outside one's group is necessarily a polemic against that group. I. I happen to have an interest in the history of the One West Spectrum, a subject which I think some others also find interesting, and I believe that it is possible to take a somewhat dispassionate approach to that subject. Uh, consider an analogy in this regard. There are people who are not Mormons who have attempted to write books which approach Mormon history in a fair and non polemical fashion. Uh, the same is the case with uh, Orthodox Muslims, the Nation of Islam, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, various Hasidic Jewish communities, and uh, you know the, the point is, is that plenty of religious groups have had outsiders attempt to take a relatively academic approach to their history. Such a trend need not be any different for the various Israelite groups, including uh, IUIC. Perhaps a more relevant example in this regard uh, or a more relevant analogy would be the writings of Sam Kestenbaum, a journalist who currently writes for The Forward and who has an interest in the various Israelite groups. Uh, even though Mr. Kestenbaum himself is not a member of any Israelite group, his articles come off as quite even-handed and uh, devoid of any polemical intent. He seems to want to be very fair to the Israelite groups he covers, including IUSC. Uh, for those who are inter interested, uh, Mr. Kestenbaum actually had a very interesting and cordial interview with uh, Nathaniel, the leader of IUIC, last October. Uh, footage of the interview can be found on the IUIC events account on YouTube in a video titled IUIC Warns Entertainers, the Sam Kestenbaum interview. But the point of that analogy is that not every piece of writing about a group by a person outside that group is necessarily a polemic against the group. Therefore, articles and videos alike should be explored and judged on their own merit. That's what I think. So, having said that, uh, the subject and thus the title of this video is ICGJC, IUIC, and Evolving One West Christology. Uh, in this video, I will again be comparing IUIC to the ICGJC, but as a disclaimer, I want to make clear that I do not intend such a comparison as an insult to either group. Uh, this is, unfortunately, it's worth mentioning because in certain circles saying, quote, you're like the ICGJC or, quote, you're like IUIC can be intended as an insult, uh, depending on who's saying it, but that's not my intention. Uh, moreover, I'm not claiming that these groups are identical. As I mentioned in my previous video, I recognize some very real differences between the two groups. Nonetheless, a comparison in certain ways can be interesting and helpful. Note that the ICGJC was once the largest One West group. Now IUIC seems to be the largest One West group. Both groups seem far more well-organized and uniform and, and, and well-ordered than many of the other One West descended groups. That aside, one other interesting way in which the two groups might be compared is with regard to the ways that their respective Christologies, i.e. their understandings of Christ vis-a-vis -vis the Father, differ from the Christology which was taught by the old ICUBK at uh, 1 West 125th Street in Harlem. The subject of this video will be the original Christology of 1 West compared to the respective Christologies of the ICGJC and IUIC, which, though both differing from the old 1 West Christology, nonetheless bear some similarity to one another. To begin, we need to cover a little background. So note that a phrase which one might hear uttered by a number of different One West groups is Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Say hello, right? That phrase is an attempt at uttering a specific Hebrew phrase in the dialect which started with the old ICUPK at One West. Uh, it's a dialect that they call Lashawan Kodash. 
Uh, for anyone who's interested in specifically the subject of Lashawan Kodash, Vocab Malone, and Faithful to God have a number of videos on their accounts which are relevant to the subject. Uh, I actually myself plan to do a series, a more in-depth series on the subject of Lashawan Kodash uh, with Faithful to God in the near future, inshallah. See. But uh, getting back to the relevant Hebrew phrase, uh, the first word in is their pronunciation of the Tetragrammaton, which they treat as exclusively the name of God the Father. The second word is their way of saying in the name of, or in the name. And uh, finally, the last word is their pronunciation of the name Joshua, which they use in reference to Christ. Uh, regarding that second word, uh, the first letter is a preposition and the second letter is the definite article. Uh, so, you know, in the name. Uh, whomever at one west first coined the phrase may have been unaware that in Hebrew the definite article is superfluous when the prep when that preposition is employed uh, they could have simply said or written uh, Bashem as it's the case it happens to be the case that biblical Hebrew uh, uses it that way and you can see for example uh, Deuteronomy 18.7 and uh, Psalm 124.8. Uh, also note that their precise construct construction retaining the definite article with the preposition is not found anywhere in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, whatever the case, if one were to Google the relevant phrase, they would find over a hundred thousand hits. Uh, presumably a great many of those hits will go back to GMS pages or pages by people influenced by GMS. Nonetheless, the phrase actually predates GMS and is used by other One West descended groups. However, if you Google a different phrase, which reads Abanawa Bahasham and then the Tetragrammaton, you'll get, a, you'll get significantly fewer hits, but you'll get a few hundred hits nonetheless. And uh, in the case of this other phrase, all the hits will go back to pages by members of the ICGJC. So this raises a question, what are the origins of these two alternative phrases? Why is it that some are using uh, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai while the ICGJC is using Abanawa Bahasham Yahweh? To answer that question, we need to go back to the old ICUBK that was at 1 West 125th Street, often referred to simply as 1 West. That group held that the father's name is Yahweh and that this was exclusively the father's name. They taught that the son's name is Yahweh Shai, and they were adamant that the son is not Yahweh. Then, as the, at a later point, as the ICUPK transitioned into the ICGJC, uh, there was actually an abrupt change in this doctrine. In 2003, the ICGJC began to teach that Yahweh is actually the name of the son. They taught that it is exclusively the son's name. That is to say, their new position was that the father is not Yahweh. As for the father, they said his name is unknown, so they called him Abanawa, which means our father in their system of Hebrew pronunciation. Uh, in more mainstream systems of Hebrew pronunciation, this would correspond to Abinu or Avinu as per modern Israeli Hebrew. This change was actually introduced by the church quite suddenly at the uh, ICGJC's 2003 Passover. Now, full disclosure, uh, lest there be any confusion, the footage you see on your screen right now is not from that 2003 Passover, rather it's from a later Passover. But I share this footage while I'm going to discuss this just to help illustrate and to help the viewer imagine what the scene was like back then. Uh, so at the 2003 Passover, the leaders of the group such as Arya, Shar, and others, and most notably Tazadakia, came out. Then they began to perform the prayers, the typical prayers, but rather than employ Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, as seasoned congregant, congregants were expecting, uh, they instead used a different phrase, the phrase that we just mentioned, Abanawa Bahasham Yahweh which initially confused many in attendance. Later that night, they unveiled their new breakdown, explaining that Christ is actually Yahweh and that the Father is not Yahweh. Apparently, much like with some previous One West doctrines, uh, perhaps including the Masha being uh, King David doctrine, uh, they were not in the mood to tolerate too many questions, and thus they, uh, they actually kicked out members who pushed back against the changed doctrine too strongly. Matter of fact, when they came out with um, Christ's name was Yahweh back in 2003, they was like, we're not even going to counsel anybody. We're just going to kick you out of the school. We're not going to pray for you. We're not going to counsel. We're just going to kick you out of the school. 
This doctrinal change then began to be reflected in their DVDs and even their public access cable television shows, which they had back then. Uh, consider, for example, a couple clips of Arya, the oldest living One West member, affirming the doctrine both explicitly and implicitly. My name is Arya. I'm a high priest and apostle of the Israelite Church of God and Christ of the Holy Father, Abba Nawa, the Almighty God, the true God, and of His Son, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, who was also God the Son, God the Father and God the Son, because Christ is a God. He is the Son of God. And this same Jesus Christ, whose real name is Yahweh, is going to come back and be set up on this earth over the kingdom of Israel. We are really worshiping Jesus Christ in his full divinity. You understand? Now, this doctrinal change only applied to the ICGJC, groups which had splintered off before the doctrinal change held to the older doctrine. So the ICGJC began to release videos taunting their rivals in the other groups for retaining the original doctrine. Consider some clips uh, showing this. All of you out there talking about your yeah, house shy, your house shy, your house shy. <laughs> If the scripture tell you that Jesus Christ was going to be a name, given a name that's above every name, how is his name Yahweh Shai's? That's the same as Joshua's. How is his name above every name, but it's the same as somebody else's? We want the breakdown. The biblical scriptorial breakdown. Y'all got the breakdowns, right? You think his name is Yahweh Shai? The Bible tell you that his name is greater than every name that's made. So how can his name be Yahweh Shai? Stupid idiot. His name is above every name. He's not going to have a name. To quickly recap the history of One West uh, theology and Christology up to this point, note that it all begins with the ICUPK, which taught that Christ is not Yahweh. Then, in 1995, there was the Masha split, which gave rise to the House of David group. The House of David group retained the same doctrine as the group they broke from, and thus continued to teach that Christ is not Yahweh. After the year 2000, the ICUPK became the ICGJC. In 2003, the ICGJC began to teach that Christ is Yahweh. Meanwhile, the House of David had undergone several splits, which would later give rise to groups which are around today, such as House of Israel, GMS, and IUIC. All those groups retained the old teaching that Christ is not Yahweh. But then something changed with one of those groups. More than a decade after the ICGJC made their doctrinal change, IUIC came to adopt a similar position, holding that Yahweh is actually Christ's name and that we do not know the, the name of the Father. Now, 
I'm not claiming that the ICGJC and IUIC have exactly the same theology or the same Christology, but this particular similarity is quite interesting. Uh, it's worth noting that IUIC put forth their position in a video on the IUIC in the classroom account titled, quote, The Israelites, the name doctrine destroyed, end quote. I'll uh, share a link to the video in the comment section or in the video description, uh, but here I want to play a relevant clip from that video. Uh, just to help illustrate the similarities between the I, uh, between IUIC's new position and the position of the ICGJC, I'm going to occasionally intersperse clips uh, from the ICGJC teaching on the same subject, as I think this will, uh, to some degree, capture some of the similarities. Do it again, please, real quick. Is that 9 and 6? One more time. I'm going to press it, Bob. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Who is this? Let's read his titles. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, mm -hmm. and his name shall be called Wonderful. One of his names is Wonderful. And his name shall be called Wonderful. And Jesus Christ, one of his titles is Wonderful. He is so wonderful. His words are so wonderful. Counselor. Of his name is Counselor. The counselor. He's a beautiful, marvelous counselor. The mighty God. Stop. Stop. One of his names is the mighty God. The mighty God. What? The mighty God. The mighty God. The all-powerful God. You remember Exodus 6 and 3? Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Dun, 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 dun. Now remember Exodus 6 and 3, the Almighty God, right? Mm -hmm. Continue. The Everlasting Father. Stop. The Everlasting Father. What? The Everlasting Father. The Everlasting Father. So he's the Father forever. Remember the Exodus 6 and 3? You remember that? The Almighty God. For my name was not known to them. You know what I'm talking about? They look confused. It's the same guy. No, I'm going to do it because they keep bringing it up. <laughs> Go ahead, continue. The everlasting father. Mm -hmm. the wait, 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 wait. Everlasting father is the same father that we called upon in Exodus 3. Yes, right. In that burning bush. Yes, right. The almighty God in chapter 6, the same angel mm -hmm. talking to Moses that said, I am that I am. Mm -hmm. It's the same exact angel. Yeah. Same person. So when you really, when you say, you're really saying, you know, you're saying this, talking to the same person twice. Really. Yeah. That's what you're really doing. <laughs> Think about it. Revelations 1 and 8, real quick. Oh, man. Uh, I can't. Uh, Listen, I, man. I keep saying this. Stop putting my face in stuff. <laughs> I don't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> Revelations 1 and 8, please. More hate mail. Revelation <laughs> chapter 1 and verse 8. Then we're going to be 4 and 8. I am Alpha and Omega. Who is this? It's in red letters in some of your Bibles. Go ahead. The beginning and the ending, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, mm -hmm. the Almighty. What do he call himself? The Almighty. Go to 4 and 8. Revelation 4 and 8. <laughs> and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were, and they were full of eyes within. No, the angels, go ahead. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. Lord what? Lord God Almighty. Go ahead. Which was and is and is to come. Who's that? There you go. So when Moses spoke to that angel in the bush, that angel gave Moses his name. Not his father's name. His own name. You understand? His father's name is not known. So the question's asked... What's his father's name? What's his son's name? Thou can tell. Because he gave us many names. Yeah. And he said, when you guys overcome, I'll give you my new name. You have his heavenly name, and you have his earthly name. Yeah, you, you understand? Remember, you, you remember. So you don't he, drop bombs on people. You remember, you remember he's saying that I will give you my God name. Right. <laughs> that means that the God you've been serving was the son all along, simple jicks. Then, yeah, listen. Uh, so... To summarize the history of the evolution of One West Christology one last time, it all begins with the ICUPK, which taught that the Father is Yahweh and that Christ is not Yahweh. In late 1995, there was the big Masha split in which Masha broke off and formed the House of David. 
The house of David retained the teaching that the Father is Yahweh and that Christ is not Yahweh. The ICUPK later, later transformed into the ICGJC, and in 2003 they op- adopted a new position where the Father is not Yahweh and Christ is Yahweh. Meanwhile, the House of David underwent multiple splits, giving rise to several different splinter groups. Those groups retained the old teaching that the Father is Yahweh and that Christ is not Yahweh. However, one of those groups, the IUIC, or excuse me, IUIC, Israel United in Christ, has more recently taken on a position similar to that of the ICGJC, that being the position that the Father is not Yahweh and that Christ is Yahweh. Such an evolution is quite interesting. Now, a lot more can be said on this topic. Uh, for example, one interesting point worthy of note is that for a certain period, about a decade ago, ranking members of the ICGJC were pushing a breakdown which posited that the Father and the Son were literally two distinct gods. Uh, now, that sort of blatant polytheism, or at least what appeared to be blatant polytheism, incurred a lot of criticism and controversy. Controversy. Uh, from people outside the group, and eventually Tazadakia himself walked the doctrine back. Uh, he stated that the Father and the Son, each being God, does not contradict a monotheistic position because, in his words, the Son is part of the Father. Then, interestingly enough, to support his position, Tazadakia appealed to the controversial Kama Yohanium. Uh, more specifically, he appealed to the King James Version of 1 John 5, 7, which states that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one. It was an incredible point, in my opinion, it was, it was an incredible point in, in the development of uh, one, Le- one West theology as it raised new questions. Uh, for example, if... if 1 John 5, 7 is treated as alluding to the union of the Father and the Son within a single God. What then do we make of the same verse's reference to the Holy Spirit? One West groups have long been hostile to the doctrine of the Trinity, but here it seemed like the ICGJC was the closest that any One West group had ever come to adopting a, a Trinitarian position. They didn't go all the way, but they came. They seemed to come very close in terms of the implications of their response to their critics. Unfortunately, from there, the ICGJBC, the ICGJC became much more insular and quiet about the nuances of their doctrines, and there hasn't been much exchange with outsiders in the decades since. Now, before closing, I want to be clear that I am not claiming that the IUIC has gone that far. I'm not claiming that they promote belief in two gods or a union of the Father and the Son within a single Godhead. I I don't know what they teach on those topics, but I just want to be clear that I'm not saying definitively that they went that far. Uh, I also want to note that I personally don't know what their position currently is regarding the correct reading and understanding for uh, 1 John 5, 7. Uh, Nonetheless, there are some real questions. So continued exploration of and discussion on IUIC Christology and theology can be both interesting and helpful. Uh, I look forward to discussing this with others, and I look forward to seeing where this goes. On that note, everybody have a good day.